So did you know a man named Korea? Cora rallied so two, close. Yeah, 250 men to rebel against Moses and Aaron as their leaders. They accused them of taking over and blamed them for all their troubles. Moses immediately fell on his knee before God. God told Moses to have all of them bring incense censers with fire to, to the, the tabernacle. The next day, God would show everyone who he had chosen as leaders. Okay, so we're going to read number 16 to 17, but before we do that, we're going to read the questions so that we can have the questions in mind, okay? So how did God protect other people? We're going to talk about that. So what do you think will happen to Korah and the rebels? They will fall into the big gigantic hole. Big gigantic hole? Yes. Okay, yeah. and so do you... No, um, when... Uh, uh, when somebody brings it to God, and then God will give them the punish. God will punish them? Yeah. Maybe. But, but uh, they will fall at the hole. Okay, let's see if you're right, right? And then who told Moses exactly what to do? God. Probably. And then what happened to Korah and his followers and all their belongings? <laughs> it fell in the hole. It fell in the hole. So God told Moses to have a leader from each of the 12 tribes using their rod walking stick to the tabernacle. Aaron's rod represents the tribe of Levi. What amazing thing happened to Aaron's rod? It became a snake when he put it down. Really? Okay, so, that's what so those are the questions. Those are the questions that we are going to think about while we read this, okay? So let's read it. Korah's Rebellion. Now Korah, the son of Isar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and uh, la, 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 took men, right here, took men, right? And they stood before Moses together with some of the sons of Israel, 250 liters of the congregation. congregation chosen in the assembly men of renown 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 me like they are well known so they assemble together against Moses and Aaron and said Your to them Uh-huh and said to them You have gone far enough for all the congregation are holy every one of them and the Lord is in their midst so why do you why do you yourself exalt yourselves above the assembly of the Lord so they're saying who who are you to make to be our leaders, right? When Moses heard this, he fell on his face and he spoke to Korah and the group saying, Tomorrow morning, <coughs> the Lord will know who is his and who is holy and will bring that one near to group himself. <laughs> Indeed, the one whom he choose, he will bring near to himself. Uh-huh. Do this. Take censors for yourself, Cora, and your oh, whole wait, group, mommy, and put hold on, I, and put fire in them, and place incense upon them in the presence of the Lord tomorrow. And the man whom the Lord chooses shall be the one who is holy. You have gone far enough, you son of Levi's. Mommy. So yeah. Ooh. So. Ooh. One day Moses fell down his in his face. So he was like, "Oh, that's like he pretty much saying he was I think pretty much being sad, and he wanted to show his respect to God. And basically, he's saying, 
Tomorrow you come here and God will choose. Is it me or you? Okay. Mommy. But he's he's pretty much saying you have gone far enough. Mommy. They are troublemakers. Yes. And, and why did I put your middle finger out? I didn't. And you put this. I like this. this. No. No, you, uh, last time when you were doing that, you were like this. Yeah, like this. That's not my middle finger, that's an O sign. No, this one. Yeah, don't put that middle you finger. You put that out. No, I don't do that, Novus. Yes, you do. No, I think you said, look wrong. Why would I just do that? That's and then not that right. No. Okay, now focus on here. Hello, hello. Then Moses says to Korah, Hear now, you sons of Levi. Is it too small an honor for you that the Lord of Israel has singled you out from the congregations of Israel to bring you near to him, to perform the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to. Right. Minister, that means help, help them. And that he has brought you near, Korah, and all your brothers, your son of Levi, with you. But are you seeking priesthood as well? Therefore you and your whole group are the ones gathered together against the... You. But as for Aaron, who is he that you grumble against him? No, Trinity, please focus. Then Moses sent a summons to Dathan and Abraham, the son of El Eliab, but they say, We will not come up. Is it not enough that you have brought, brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey to have us die in the wilderness? But you would not appoint yourself as, but you would also appoint yourself as master over us. Indeed, you have not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor have you given us an inheritance of fields and vineyard. Would you gouge out the eyes of these men? Yeah, yeah, okay. Hi, there, Yeah, okay. We will. We no. will. Not come up. up. Yeah. Trinity, sit down down here. And so these Moses called these people Dathan and Abraham, but they're like, "Who are you? You brought us in here. You gave us all these trouble. We're not listening to you, right?" That's what they're saying. Then Moses became very angry and said to the Lord, "Pay no attention to their offering." I have not taken a single donkey from them, nor have I done harm to any of them. Moses said to Korah, You and your group be present before the Lord tomorrow, you and they along with Aaron. And each of you take his censer and put incense on it. And each of you bring his censer before the Lord. How many censers? Two hundred and fifty censers. Also you and Aaron shall each bring his censer. So they took each one his own censer and put fire on it and placed incense on it. And they took stood at the entrance of the tent of meeting with Moses and Aaron. So Korah assembled the congregation against them at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among his, this congregation, so that I may consume them instantly. But they fell on their faces and said, God, the God of the spirits of humanity, when one person sins, you will, be ang will you be angry with the entire congregation? So basically, God is saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you, Moses and Aaron, but I'm going to punish all these other people. And what did Moses and Aaron do? They talked to God. They asked God, they're like, God, one person sinned. Will you punish the entire congregation? Right? Meaning, God, don't do that. You, you're merciful, right? You won't do that. And then, then the Lord said to Moses, saying, 
Speak to the congregation, saying, Get away from the area around the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abraham. Then Moses arose and went to Dathan and Abraham with the elders of the Israel following him. And he spoke to the congregation, saying, Get away now from the tents of these wicked men, and do not touch anything that belonged to them, or you will be swept away in all their sin. Yes, so they move away from the area around the tent of Korah, Dathan, and Abraham. And Dathan and Abraham came out and stood at the entrances of the tent, along with their wives, their son, and their little ones. Then Moses said, By this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these deeds. For it is not my doing. If these men die the death of mankind, or if they suffer the fate of all mankind, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord bring about an entirely new thing, and the ground open up its mouth, and swallow them with everything that is theirs, and their descendant alive into Sheol, then you will know that these men have been... Yes, so you see, can you, they were disrespectful to the Lord. Should we be respectful or should we be disrespectful to God? Respectful. Exactly, God is great, right? And God so, don't have sin, he is powerful and protect us. Right, okay. So now, let's switch back to our thing. So how did God protect the other people? So verse 6, 26 to 27. So he spoke to the congregation, Get away from the tent of these wicked men, and do not touch anything that belongs to them, or you will be swept away in their sin. So they moved away from the area around the tent of Korah, okay, and stood at the entrance of their tent, or the tent, so they move away from the area around the tent of Korah. Okay? So how did God protect the other people? That be, um, God said to move away from the tent. Yeah, God. good summary. God said for the other people to set, move away from the tents of the people who disrespected God, right? Mm -hmm. And then verse 28, who told Moses exactly what to do? God. God. Let's check it, 28 to 30. 28, then Moses said, 28 to by this th you shall know that the Lord has sent me. If these, who told Moses exactly what to do? It seems like. <coughs> As you what? It seems like God didn't tell Moses. Mommy, look, a triangle. Uh huh. Now focus on here, you guys. So, verse 28. Sit up, please. If I tell you one more time, you're not going to play your tablet. You are being disrespectful right now. She, and she, what about me? You sit well. So verse 28 right now, it said, by, by, Then Moses said, By this you shall know. Right? He, he was asking the Lord to bring a, a new thing. And open up the ground and everything like that. So, I think, sit facing here. Are you facing? So, I think Moses asked God to do a new, a new thing. New thing. I don't think God told him these because the Bible didn't record that, okay? So I think God heard Moses' prayer. So, 31, 
And as he finished speaking all these words, the ground that was under them spread open. Good. And the earth opened its mouth and they followed them. Their household and all the people who belonged to Korah with all their possessions. So they and all that belonged to them went down alive to Shoal, and the earth closed over them, and they perished from the midst of the assembly. Then all Israel who were around them fled at their outcry, for they said, The earth might swallow us. Fire also came down from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who were offering the incense. Okay, so then right here, what happened to Korah and their followers and all their belonging? The earth opened and mouth and swallowed them. Yeah, so they were swallowed by the earth, right? The ground. How, uh, how did they uh, got swallowed? Um, so basically, you know, I think this might be talking about an earthquake. Sometime when you have an earthquake, the ground split open. But this one, it says swallow, so it seems like the ground also came back, right? So it's not just open and then stay open and there's a crack. This feels like there's it open and actually it came back and only these people were were take going into the ground alive, right? And so I think that's what happened. Uh, how can worker still be alive when uh, there's a crack? Uh, what? How can workers still be alive when they go through a crack? There's no going through a crack. I'm just saying I think this is similar to an earthquake where the ground opens up and then it comes back. And so those people are now dead. The people that got swallowed pretty much died. Why? Cause because it, they're not living anymore. Uh, Here why they died. And the ground was very deep. And when they fall down, if it was too deep, then it's my part of ground. So when they fall down, then their whole body and they crack. Maybe. We don't know, right? We only know that they got swallowed up. Okay, so right now. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Eliezer, the son of Aaron the priest, that he shall pick up the censers from the midst of the burnt area, because they are holy, and you are to scatter the burning coals further away. As for the censers of these men who have sinned at the cost of their own lives, have them made into hammer sheets as plating for the altar, since they did present them before the Lord, and they are holy, and they shall serve as a sign to the sons of Israel. So the priest Eliezer took the bronze censers which the men who were burned had offered and they hammered them out as plating for the altar as a reminder to the son of Israel so that no layman, anyone who was not the descendant of Aaron would approach to burn incense before the Lord and he would not become like Korah and his group just as the Lord has spoken to him through Moses. So... This is pretty much a sign to them. Don't do what Korah did, right? If you do what Korah did, look at what happened to him, right? He that's what God punished. is, he got punished. So that's pretty much what, what, um, dangerous stuff, what God is saying. Okay. Is that also dangerous stuff? Yeah. To, to be re disrespectful to God and to God, the leader that God gave them that's really just that's really bad so murmuring and plague but on the next day all the congregations of the son and of israel grumble against moses and aaron saying you are the one who have caused the death of the lord's people it came about however when the congregation had assembled against moses and aaron that they turned towards the tent of meeting and behold the cloud covered it and the lord the glory of the lord appeared then moses and aaron came to the front of the tent of meeting and the lord spoke to moses saying 
Get away from this congregation so that I may consume them instantly. Then they fell on their faces. And Moses said to Aaron, Take your censer and put fire in it from the altar and place incense on it. Then bring it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them. For wrath has gone out from the Lord and the plague has begun. So these people, you know, Moses and Aaron. They are people. They are grumbling. So remember how when, when Korah, Remember how when Korah told told the uh, congregation to go against Moses and they prayed to con- the congregation so that the congregation won't be punished? Now the congregation is go- saying, you are the cause of this. You. Right? And Moses is praying for them again, Moses and Aaron. But then he knows that a plague has begun right so so something like a disease has begun then Aaron took it just as Moses had spoken and he ran to the midst of the assembly and behold the plague had begun among the people so he put the incense and make atonement for the people and he took his hand between the dead I mean he stood his stand between the dead and the living so that the plague was brought to a halt but those who died by the plague were 14,700 in number, besides those who died on account of Korah. Then Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the meeting, for the plague had been brought to a halt. So God is saying, I am going to punish these people. They keep on rebelling against Moses and Aaron, and they keep on saying that Moses and Aaron are like bringing them from a land a good land and brought them here right so they were really grumbling and Moses and and then he started a plague he started a disease and it started to kill off people so Aaron is running with this thing and he stood between the living over here and the dead over here the one with the plague over here and the plague stopped but the plague took the life of 14,000 people, right? So that's, it's not good when God punish people, okay? So Aaron's staff buds. Then the, Mo, then the Lord said to Moses saying, speak to the sons of Israel and obtain from them a staff for each father's household. 12 staffs from all their leaders for their father's household. Mommy, huh? when I grow up, I'm going to marry Moses. No, Moses already like uh, died a long time ago. And, and, you know, I don't know. Like, there'll be someone for you. you mommy. I'm already married, though. I want to marry Daddy. <laughs> Daddy's already married too. I want to marry Trinity. No, you guys are sister and brother. No, when I go up, I will marry Noah. No. Okay, you shall write each man's name on his staff and write Aaron's name on the staff of Levi, for there is to be one staff for each head of each father's household. And you shall then leave them in the tent of meeting in front of the testimony where I meet with you. And it will come about that the staff of the man whom I choose will sprout. sprout. So I will relieve myself of their grumblings of the son of Israel who are grumbling against you. So Moses spoke to the son of Israel and all their leaders gave him a staff one for each leader for their father's household, twelve staffs in all, and with the staff of Aaron among their staff. Then Moses left the staff before the Lord in the tent of the... Testimony? Yes. Now on the next day, Moses went into the tent of the testimony, and behold, Aaron's staff for the house of Levi has sprouted and produced buds and bloom with blossom and it yielded right um, ripe, um, 
almonds. Moses then took out of all the staffs from the presence of the Lord to all the sons of Israel, and they looked, and each man took his staff. But the Lord said to Moses, Put the staff of Aaron back in front of the testimony to be kept as a sign against the rebels, so that you may put an end to their grumblings against me, and they do not die. Moses did so just as the Lord had commanded him. So he did. So, look at this. God is saying their grumbling was against me. I mean, against God. Right? They used Moses and Aaron as an excuse, but they were grumbling against God. Right? Then the son of Israel spoke to Moses, saying, Behold, we are passing away. We are perishing. We are perishing. Everyone who come nears, who come nears to the tabernacle of the Lord must die. Are we to perish completely? Mm. So they are saying, we are dying. We are dying. I don't know why they said that, but that's what they said, right? Mm -hmm. So, but we finished that. So what amazing thing happened to Aaron's broad? I already told it. It didn't grow. It didn't turn into a snake. What happened to it? It grew almond. Yeah, it blossomed and grew almonds, right? Very good, Trinity. Okay, right here. This is blurry. So now, yeah, I took it. It was blurry. God invited the Israelites to be his special people. I cannot see it. I'm reading it for you. He made a way for them to be close to him and not die because of their sin. He gave instructions for the tabernacle and worship. But Korah and his followers thought they should be do, able to do things their own way. So draw a picture of what happened to Korah and the rebels. So you can draw that, right? And then we're going to do remember reverse. Your presence among us set your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. Exodus 33, 15b. 15b. Your presence among us set your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. Exodus 33 verses 15b. Novus, go ahead and do it. Your presence. Among us, is that your people and me apart from all other people on the earth? Good. Exodus 33. Exodus 33. Verses 15b. Verses 15b. Okay, Trinity, your turn. Your present among us set your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. I said that they did you for your fifteen B. High five. Good job you guys. So now do your homework. <laughs>